Today we are going to take a closer look at this HEQ VTOR product. This is a prototype, so uh, it might not be <laughs> delivered in the state that you see here in the final packaging. This is going to be super, super exciting. And of course, everything was quiet down here. And now people are sort of pouring in from left and right. But let's see how that goes. So this is the body of the aircraft. And you can already see right now that this is a, a quite significantly larger than what we are used to dealing with here on the channel. It also has like a three axis stabilized gimbal here on the front. There is a huge battery that goes into the drone. There's a charger and there's a very, very nice remote. I guess it's like an Android based system. There should be a couple of antennas here that will be mounted on the top. So that part seems like a pretty solid uh, base setup for operating uh, this kind of aircraft. This is absolutely different than what we are used to because a drone basically relies on <laughs> that the props are spinning to uh, be airborne. But this one is actually a plane, basically, that will allow it to take off vertically, which uh, basically combines the best from both worlds, uh, the takeoff lift capabilities of the drone and capabilities of the aircraft. This should give us some pretty amazing flight times. I think um, if I looked in the spec sheet, it says that it's around 60 minutes of flight on a single charge, which is really, really amazing. Here's the other wing, basically. So if you put it like it's supposed to be, we more or less have the setup ready. Make sure that we haven't forgotten anything here. There's a set of propellers. We probably need those at some point. There's also a USB-C charging cable. We don't need that right now. Could that be, could that be an additional battery? I think it is. Yes, sir. So this kit comes with two batteries. But now you're thinking, how is it pulling off this vertical uh, lift off? That's where it's getting pretty interesting. <laughs> this is the motor setup. Very nice. Hope we can figure out <laughs> which prop goes where. <laughs> but the idea with this setup is that these are basically mounted in this position. And maybe we can already do it. You can see there's a connector here on the bottom. So if I just punch this one, it may not be the right side. I think they have made it so you can't assemble it the wrong way, which is quite clever. I've been messing around with building RC stuff in the past and you always mess around with the prop directions and the motor allocation and stuff like that. And I can tell you something, the that drone will not fly if you mess up the order of the props. There's also additional props here. So you can't really put it together the wrong way. So this one goes in here and hopefully we can hear a click. Yes, there's a small click there. Then we can do the other exercise here. It's always very, very, very fiddly to get this stuff up and running. But so far this has been quite simple. So this is basically the aircraft as it is. And as you probably noticed, we are back here in our in my field lab here. It's in the parking lot next to where I live. But we're not going to fly the drone here. We are going to assemble it. Maybe I can get it to hover. Uh, <laughs> but we're not going to fly it around here. We've got to go to somewhere under more controlled conditions uh, to do that. The whole principle behind this type of aircraft is that uh, it lifts off like this, and then when it gets to a certain distance, you can flip a switch, and then it goes like this, and then it basically acts as an aircraft. So now I've formatted an SD card, and I've done all sorts of stuff to get a little bit more familiar with this. Connecting the battery here. And we tuck the connector nice away here. Put this one in. And what happens now is that, that the, the the gimbal is calibrated. And now we're firing up the remote here. And it's a simple Android system, so it's very, very easy to install all sorts of apps here that will allow you to maybe record the screen. So I have, I have installed something called X Recorder. So let me just fire up a screen recorder here so we, you can see whatever it is that I am doing. So now this one is running, and then we are starting the app. And see there's an image where we are. And there's, I can control it up and down here with these over the side here. 
So everything is kind of working as uh, I would expect it to. And in the meantime, I've mounted the props and it seems there's a system here that would only allow you to screw on a prop on the right motor. So everything uh, is kind of secure in that regards. Then there's the whole calibration routine. You need to calibrate the compass inside uh, the aircraft and you do that by doing all these sorts of uh, turning motions. And there's a nice, uh, I can just show you the process here. There's uh, this nice uh, guide that is here inside that will take you through step by step how you perform this. But it's basically rotating the drone around its own axis, then flipping it down like that and rotating it. And then the last one is where you have to sort of rotate it like that. I do want to mention that AGQ has mentioned for me that this is a beta app, so it might be a little bit flaky. And this is one of the issues that you have if you go into the calibration here. You can't really cancel it, so it's, uh, it's um, yeah, they need to fix that. But luckily, it's an Android system, so it's very easy for us to restart the application. Another thing that you need to do is you need to calibrate the uh, P2 tube, P2 tube, that will allow you to measure the airspeed. It's basically this tube that you have up here, and you need to start the calibration process by blocking this tube, and then it will say finish. Yeah, actually, it's doing it right now, so I can just do it. So I can just hold my finger on top of it. Then it says finish, and then you need to blow into the tube, and then it says finished. So now we have uh, the compass in control, and we have uh, made the airspeed sensor calibrated, so it's capable of detecting how fast this drone is flying. So let's put it out here and see what we can do. And you know, because this drone is way beyond 250 grams, to be able to fly it for real, you need to be outside the city limit. One of the challenges here is that when it flies like a multi-rotor, it is quite wide. Yeah, I would fear we're going to have issues with the wind. As you can see, there's a nice flat field here outside the city that will allow us to test this out, at least for now. All right, we are ready to make a test here. Oh, no. Well, that didn't go as, <laughs> as expected. Luckily, we have some spare props. This time, I think we will put it in the field out here. So let's uh, try and see if we can get it up flying. So now it's up and it's hovering. The wind is really bad here today. So see, it has a hard time. When I let go of the sticks, it's being, being pushed back towards me. So I guess the, the purpose of today's test was to get it up, at least up and hovering. So I might do a version two, or I will do a version two where I try to fly it like a normal plane. But I'm not comfortable enough with the sticks yet to do this. But if I leave it there, see, if I leave it there, you can see that it is basically being pushed to, uh, back towards me. It's not, keeping its position and see it operates uh, quite differently than a normal drone. I don't dare to flick it into uh, the flight mode yet because uh, yeah, at least I need a pair of glasses <laughs> before I do that. I think we will just land it here again. The purpose of this test was uh, mainly just to see, tell you what was in the box and uh, also just to get it up flying for the first time. I am sorry that I wrecked it a little bit flying into a tree. Let me just see if I can land it here very nicely. Whoa. Man, this is itch, twitchy. I need to land it manually now before I break something else. <laughs> it was a bit of a rough landing, but at least it's back safe on the ground right now. There's no doubt this product is uh, significantly more uh, not so mature as the DJI products that we are normally using. Uh, at least it's a long time since I've been battling an uh, RC aircraft like uh, this one. But of course, you can see the problem. The problem is when the wind gets towards it and it flies like a multi-rotor drone, it has a lot of surface area that would get it pushed around. It was a rough introduction to the VTOL business and uh, you need to be aware of that. It is rather different. And if I look at the build quality of the drone, the foam seems very, very stable. And also when I collided with the three over there, 
The only thing that broke on um, yeah, the aircraft was one of the props. That part is good. Definitely interesting and it has been kind of an <laughs> experience to try this. Of course, I want to try it where it flies like a real uh, plane as well. But uh, we have to wait until uh, the conditions are more calm. And that gives me a chance to do a part two. And once that is ready, you will be able to access it through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.